All right, so welcome back. Welcome back to you. Welcome back to me. We're back in this thing, baby, and I got to tell you, I missed you guys. Missed all of you so much because I love doing this show, and I love connecting. I love seeing people connect with me, tell me how much they love the show, see how much the show has helped them, and I really miss that. But again, sometimes you have to take some time away. You know, you got to sharpen the axe before you can get back down to chopping that tree. And this was my time to quietly reflect and think about how I want to continue growing the Cut the Crap show. Over the past three years, we've grown to 450,000 downloads an episode of over 120 countries around the world. And I love each and every single one of you for tuning in and for sharing your stories about how much my content has resonated with you. It means a lot to me. But here's the thing, I gotta be true to myself. And over the past little while, I stopped reading books in their entirety and I stopped enjoying them. And the reason for that is that I would, because of the show, I would go through a book from start to finish because that's what I do. But I stopped doing that because I started to read a book and I would find a golden nugget that I would just absolutely fall in love with. And I would sit, I would contemplate, I would think, I would make notes, I would do research, I'd look up videos, I would find more books about that golden nugget so I can learn more about it. And that's how I started to evolve how I read books. Instead of going from, you know, start to finish, you know, in books. Look at all these tabs, eh? Like, instead of going from start to finish, I started to lock on to one golden nugget. But then I had a little bit of, um, a little bit of anxiety. Not real anxiety, but I had a little bit of fear that, well, all of you tune in every single week because you want the golden nuggets from every book. For the past three years, I've heard nothing but good things about, you know, wow, Ryan, I, I love it. You saved me so much time. But I started to feel like, who am I, number one, to pull the golden nuggets from the book? So I started to bring on authors and allow the authors to do that. But we never really covered the books in their entirety. And for me, I started to realize that what makes me happy isn't going through a book from start to finish. Instead, it's locking in on one golden nugget. One thing that I think can create impact in your day. And I want to share that with you. So... This is where I need to hear your feedback. And this is very, very important to me that you do. I'm going to change the Cut the Crap Show format. Instead of me coming on every single week where I read a book from start to finish and I share with you the golden nuggets from the book, I'm going to find one golden nugget from a book, from a video, from a story that I read in the news that I want to share. And I want to bring it to you, not every week, but every single day. Each episode will be about five minutes, maybe about five to seven minutes short. Something you can listen to first thing in the morning to get you off on the right foot. When I talk about create your eight, every single day I want you creating your eight. Nine and ten experiences don't happen that often. You wake up every morning at a five. The first action you take, the first thoughts you think will push you either up or down. I want it so that when you wake up in the morning, you tune into the Cut the Crap show and I give you a piece of stimulus that pushes you up from a five to a six. Or if you wake up, you get a piece of bad news and you're at a four, then I can move you from a four to a five. There's a lot of good news out there. A lot of good stories, a lot of stimulus from books. I keep showing this book. I love this book, by the way. One of my favorites. And there's so much stimulus out there that if I can bring it to you, if I could cut the crap from your life, if I can start to plant good seeds in your mind that helps your mind cope with anxiety, cope with fear, depression, learn helplessness, apathy, fear, sadness, guilt. If I can help you, then... That's what this podcast is about. It's not about me reading a book from start to finish and sharing all the gold nuggets with you. And if that's what you want, then I'm very, very sorry. But I have evolved. I've evolved how I like doing the show. I've evolved as a human being, as 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 an individual, to appreciating one golden nugget from a book and going deep, deep, deep into that golden nugget and talking about it. I've learned to appreciate the good news stories that I hear and digging deep into why why that good news story or how that good news story, sorry, can fuel my own positive psychology. I love watching videos or hearing audio that resonates with me and stuff that resonates with me, stuff that helps me create my eight. I hope that it will help you create your eight as well. So this is where I need your feedback. What do you think? Are you on board? Are you on board with hearing me? You know, this shaved head bearded guy every single day on YouTube, on podcast format where I'm sharing a golden nugget with you every single week from a book, from an author, from a conversation I've had, from a news story that I found was positive that I believe can fuel my ability to create my eight. In the end, the cut the crap show started as me cutting the crap from books, but now it's cutting the crap from life. 
We all deal with demons. We all deal with our own challenges. Every single person out there is dealing with their own problem that you know nothing about. And if I can be that positive source of, of, of energy first thing in the morning for you, then damn, that's what I want to do. So with that in mind, this is the very first episode in which I'm going to share my new format with you. This is the beginning of the new format for the Cut the Crap show. Will I still bring on authors? Yes, I'm still going to contact authors every every once in a while to bring them on to have a conversation. If I read something from a book, I'm going to go contact that author and say, hey, I want to hear your opinion on this one golden nugget. Why did you come to this? Tell me your thoughts on this. And I'm going to share that with you on YouTube, on Spotify, on all the same ways you guys have been digesting my content to this to this point. So again, let me know what you think. Let me know on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Let me know in the YouTube comments what you think. But in the end, I just want to give my best self. And I have to be authentic. And if I'm not enjoying going from start to finish in a book, then why am I doing it? If I find that I'm finding more happiness and digging deep in one golden nugget, then I hope that you're going to see the energy. You're going to be able to benefit from that. And I hope you like it still. And if not, then I'm very, very sorry, but I really hope that I can keep you along the journey with me here. All right. So without further ado, let's kick off the very new format for the Cut the Crap Show. And again, I hope that you enjoy this. I really do. The Ultimate Sales Machine by none other than my mentor holds a very, very close place in my heart. And I could not think of a better individual or a better book to kickstart this new iteration of the Cut the Crap Show. Chad Holmes, The Ultimate Sales Machine, an amazing book, an amazing man, an amazing mentor for me early on in my career. There's a golden nugget in here. And by the way, The Cut the Crap Show, uh, episode number three, I covered The Ultimate Sales Machine. But the one thing that I want to share with you in this book that meant a lot to me, and I hope it's going to mean a lot to you, is pig-headed determination and discipline. Pig-headed determination is sometimes all you need to succeed. We think, oh, I'm not smart enough, or I don't have enough money, I don't have enough connections, or I, 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 don't, I don't know where to go first, I don't know what to do, or I've been said, people said no to me so many times. People, I, I fail all the time, I don't know what to do. Yeah, you can think that way. But the one thing, the one prescription to success that you all need to win is pig headed determination. And I don't even mean to win, win what? Win the new job? Win the new contract? No. The the body you're after. Working out. Working out is a discipline. It takes pig-headed determination to get the body that you want. Don't give up. Don't weigh yourself every day expecting a new change. Just stick to it. Pig-headed determination. That new job, you're sitting there unemployed and you're saying, I can't find a new job. Like, it's so hard for me. There's no jobs. There's no opportunity. Don't think that way. Pig-headed determination. Don't give up. Never give up. You're trying to start that new business and all you can do is continue to focus on the failures and my accounts receipt, I'm not getting enough money, I'm not getting enough clients and there's problem after problem and now I got another tax bill and all this stuff. Listen, pig-headed determination, don't give up. You can't find a new new boyfriend, new girlfriend. You're sitting there, you're like, are there any good girls or any good guys out there for me? Pig-headed determination, do not give up. The problem is we all give up too easy. And the problem is we think, oh, wow, Ryan, it's just that easy. Never give up. Yeah, it is. But here's the difference. Your approach needs to change. If you've been on a path the entire time and this path has not yielded results yet, then change what you're doing and start that new path. And listen, are the results coming? If not, if results aren't coming and you've given it a shot, you've given it a fair shot, you've given it you know, enough energy and you still haven't gotten anywhere, change your approach. Start a new path. Pig-headed determination. We never stop. I could tell you so many times where if I had given up, I would not be where I am today. Failure teaches us lessons. Lessons in terms of what works and what doesn't work. And eventually you will find what works, but you cannot give up. When I talk about pig-headed determination, I always think about the story of Sylvester Stallone. What an incredible story. The man started off in poverty. Him and his wife and his dog, they were just sitting there, barely getting by, barely making any money. And he decided that he wanted to be an actor. I had this big dream of becoming an actor, but he could never make it come true. 
tried out for a thousand different acting roles and got kicked out of agents' offices one, two, three, four, five times. Sly just never gave up. But here's the thing. He kept getting kicked out one after another after another, and he never got a job. Did he give up? No, because Sly had pig-headed determination. Now, along the way, he, he had difficulties, right? He hawked his wife's jewelry. He sold her jewelry, and after that, she said, I'm done with you. He couldn't have enough money to pay the bill. So he eventually one day had no money to his name, and he had to sell his beloved dog. And as a dog lover myself, like, I love my Roxy. I could never think about selling Roxy. That would be the rock bottom moment in my life. I had to sell Roxy in order to buy food to feed myself. Picture that for a second. Selling your best friend. And I think he sold him for, I don't know, like 50 bucks, 100 bucks. Sold him for like nothing. So Sly told the story in terms of how he walked away. He walked away crying because he sold his best friend. He sold his dog for like a little bit of money. He got home and he watched this fight. This fight where this guy just kept taking a beating, kept taking a beating, and he just kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. Ali versus Weapon, I believe it was. And at that moment, that stimulus, that spark, sparked something in him. So he grabbed his piece of paper and started writing, started writing. And all of a sudden, he created this story for Rocky. He was like, I got it. This is it. So he took the story of Rocky and he brought it to a whole bunch of, of uh, producers' offices. And all these producers said, Pfft get out of here this is predictable this is stupid this is dumb no one's gonna ever create this same thing he didn't give up what happened he changed his approach instead of trying to become an actor he decided to become a writer and he started to sell this script he kept selling kept selling kept selling nobody would buy nobody buy nobody buy, until one day somebody did somebody said i will give you a hundred thousand dollars for this script slide and he says yeah you got a deal but i gotta be the actor and i gotta be the lead role and they said you're not an actor you don't sound like an actor they wanted to have Ryan O'Neill as the main actor. So anyways, they said no deal or because we don't want you to be the actor. They came back to him. $200,000. Sly says, no deal. I got to be the actor. They said $300,000. He said, no deal. I got to be the actor in this thing. That's it. I am Rocky. Sylvester Stallone, I am Rocky. They said, fine. You know what? We're going to give you, I think they gave him like $15,000 for the script. And look what happened. Made millions and millions and millions of dollars. And... Salai obviously became a resounding success as a result of that. So what did he do when he got that money? He went back to the liquor store. Went back to the liquor store and waited for that guy to come. Day after day after he waited and all of a sudden that guy came back with his dog. He said, do you remember me? I sold you the dog. Eventually the man said, you know what? Yeah, I remember you, but I can't give you the dog back. And he said, I will double how much I gave you. I will triple it. In the end, I think he ended up giving him all of his money and he gave him a role in Rocky. The man never gave up. He never gave up. He changed his approach. He never gave up. This is Sly's story, man. This is Sly's story in terms of how he became a success. The man never gave up. The man has pig-headed determination. And if we all had that, what could we achieve in life? What could we become? But it goes to show that you don't have to be special. You don't have to be remarkable. You just have to have PhD. Pig-headed determination. Don't give up. Continue to keep trying, trying, trying. If something doesn't work and you're failing, change your approach. Try, try, try. Change your approach. Try, try, try. Change your approach. And eventually, something is going to work. And when it works, you're going to take off. And I hope that wherever you're at in life today, you take pig-headed determination. You bring that forward and you believe in yourself. And if at times you don't believe in yourself, then message me for some words of inspiration. Message me if you want some help. And I will hope to continue to fuel your pig-headed determination. Come back here every day, and I hope that I can give you enough inspiration, enough fuel to help you drive forward every day to believe in yourself, to not give up on your dream, to not give up on your goals in terms of where you want to go. Pig-headed de determination is so powerful. And I remember that at a very young age, obviously, when Chet showed me that and told me that, and I hope that that resonates with you. In any case, my friends, I hope that you have a beautiful, productive, inspired day today. And we'll catch you back here tomorrow with another Golden Nugget. Have yourselves an awesome day. I love you all.